Hello, and if you are someone who has been hesitant to try CBD because you've been curious about how safe it is, whether it's short term or long term, then please stay tuned to this video because I think you'll find it quite educational. And without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So welcome, welcome, I am Dr. Jack, and if you want to get to know me a little bit better and understand what this channel is about and understand my background a little bit more, I'll put a link down below for my very first YouTube video where I kind of explain all that. But for today's purpose, this video will be about the safety profile of CBD. And I originally shot this wanting to talk about CBD safety as well as focusing on what makes a high quality CBD and then ultimately my suggestion of what brand to use, uh, but that video ended up being nearly 30 minutes long. I thought it was way too long, so I'm kind of chopping it up and splitting it into two separate videos. But this one will talk about the safety, and please stay tuned, like and subscribe so that you know when the next video will come out. It shouldn't take too long. So in this entire series of CBD videos that I am doing for educational purposes, this one is extremely important. Well, this one is a subsequent one because you have to know what you're getting into when you go to a store or you go online to purchase one. If you are anything like me, I thought that all CBD was created equal, but it can't be further from the truth. Because it's not truly regulated yet, there are a lot of people, everyone, their mom and dad is making CBD or growing CBD these days and trying to earn a dollar or two off of it. And so it's extremely important for you as a consumer to understand the details of what makes it truly safe because purchasing one from a highly reputable company, say online or something like that, versus just going to a gas station and purchasing CBD, it just isn't the same. Hey, what's up, Bob? How's the wife and kids, buddy? Good, good, good. Hey, listen, for today, can you give me a, a bottle of your finest top shelf CBD product? And uh, also, can you give me 10 gallons of gas on pump two, please? All right, buddy, thanks. You take care of yourself, all right? Bye. So one of the runny jokes that I keep making to people is that I'm gonna make t-shirts and bumper stickers that say don't buy your CBD from a gas station. Because if you're out there bargain basement price shopping, chances are that's where your CBD was grown, was in somebody's basement. And in the world of CBD, you truly get what you pay for. Wow, CBD, 99% off. Buy one, get 10 bottles for free. This is an awesome deal, I'm getting this. And so in order to get a high quality and safe product, there's a lot of financial aspects that go into producing something like that. And so unfortunately that obviously is passed down to the consumer. There was actually two studies that I want to mention and one of them was done by the FDA back in 2016 where they went out and just basically purchased a bunch of different CBD products. And they found that 91% of the CBD bottles that they bought actually did not have what they claimed to be inside the bottle. And then there was another one done by the Journal of American Medical Association where they went out and basically did the same thing and they found that 70% of the bottles that they bought did not have what the bottle claimed was inside the bottle. I mean, just think about that for a second. That means that if you went out and bought 10 bottles randomly of CBD, that seven to nine of them on average do not have what you think is inside of it. You know, they could have things like pesticides, fungus, mold, bacteria, otherwise known as microbials, or even heavy metals. You gotta do your homework and know what you what to look for before you ever walk into anywhere that you're trying to purchase CBD from or if you're going online to purchase CBD. So let's really focus on discussing the safety and we'll start by a little bit of a history lesson and we're going to take it way back actually all the way back to 2727 BC and there was a famous Chinese emperor, Emperor Xing Nung, who many regard as the father of Chinese medicine. And he had the very first documented case of using cannabis to treat all sorts of ailments. And specifically, there was documentation that he used it in tea to treat things like malaria, as well as gout, and for memory issues. And while we're at it and talking about history, I'm gonna take it even further back. Uh, hemp was basically discovered as far back as 10,000 BC in Taiwan when it was the very first war crop. Hemp has 
essentially over 50,000 usages. And one of the big things about hemp is that the fiber is very strong and very durable. And so whenever there was war to be fought, a lot of the Chinese monarchs would order all of their farmers to grow hemp as the main crop. And the reason was that they found that the hemp fiber when you make bows out of them, they would shoot further and they were more durable than the bows of the enemy. And so, bet you didn't know that. Anyway, moving along. So why am I giving you guys this history lesson? It's not because I'm an aspiring you know, history professor or something like that. I'm saying all that because even dating all the way back then, we have not found any strong evidence to show that CBD, or any evidence for that fact, that CBD has caused any overdose deaths or any kind of non-reversible outcome. And it has been my experience as well clinically in seeing so many patients on CBD. And for the purposes of this educational video, I'm mainly focusing on CBD because it has by far been the most researched. Please know that it is very, very different than marijuana or THC. We should probably just cover that in regards to the nomenclature and some definition of it. So you have the cannabis plant and you have two forms. You have marijuana, which is very high in THC, which is what gets people high and causes the euphoria. And then you have hemp, and that is where CBD is derived. And hemp is defined by the US federal government as less than 0.3% THC. Nowhere near enough to cause a high or euphoria, but again, you want it for something called the entourage effect, which you'll hear me mention from time to time, and I will take a deeper dive, maybe in the next video, to describe that effect. What you should know is that hemp and THC are two cannabinoids out of 180 within the cannabis plant. The other, just to mention a few other cannabinoids, things such as CBG, CBN, CBC, and the list goes on. And we don't even know what the health benefits of those are. They're currently being researched. I just wanted to mention all of that because the nomenclature is very important to know and to equate, you know, I always tell my patients that to equate CBD to marijuana is like calling water, uh, I don't know, vodka or something like that, only because they're both clear liquids. It cannot be further from the truth. And actually the CBD is considered the anti-marijuana because CBD counteracts the high effect of marijuana. Moving along, I just wanna tell you guys about some other studies. Uh, the FDA did a study from 1997 to 2005 where they actually looked at 17 FDA approved drugs and those 17 FDA approved drugs actually had over 10,008 deaths attributable to those drugs. And when they looked at cannabis, they found zero. And there was another report that was related or uh, released by the World Health Organization, the WHO, it was their 39th report in 2018 where they specifically looked at CBD. They stated, quote, CBD has no negative public health effects. It is safe and well tolerated and also has no abuse potential. And by the way, pretty much all of this information that I have been saying, especially these studies, they are all uh, linked down below in the description. So it is also worth mentioning that the FDA as of February 2018 actually rescheduled a drug, which is basically a CBD isolate, which is pure CBD called Epidiolex, which has been FDA approved to treat severe seizures. And they rescheduled it from from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 5. Schedule 1 are drugs like heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. Schedule 5 are drugs like Lyrica, Lomodal, or Robitussin, and they are deemed to have the absolute lowest abuse potential. So that is where they basically classified CBD isolate. So that means, I don't know if those of you know what Lomodal is, but it's an anti-diarrhea drug. And so that is about the likelihood of somebody abusing CBD versus Lomodal, which is again, an anti-diarrhea drug. And if you're gonna abuse that, then you may wanna to talk to your doctor or therapist sooner than later. So. One of the things, if you go on the internet to look up CBD safety is you will come across uh, some articles as well as some research basically talking about stress on the liver as well as the cytochrome P450 enzymes. Let's, let's just talk on, touch on those uh, very, very quickly. Basically, some of these articles listed as damage to the liver, I think that's a little bit harsh of language. It's more of just stress to the liver because it is reversible as soon as they stop CBD. In both cases where the cytochrome P450 enzyme was interfered with, and we'll get into the details of that in a second, as well as any type of stress on the liver, those 
typically occurred in studies where they were using very high dosages of CBD. And again, it was in the form of a CBD isolate or a pure CBD, not in the form of say a full spectrum or broad spectrum where it has all the other nutrients of the plant to offer a wider therapeutic range uh, and window. It was also hardly ever seen where people were taking CBD by itself. One study that I was looking at where they saw five to 15% of people on the Epidiolex, which is that seizure approved drug that's mainly for kids. Um, they found that five to 15% of the children seem to develop elevated AST or ALT, which are liver enzymes. And in those situations, almost all those kids were on other drugs such as Valproate, which is a drug that is is given for seizure patients that is known to cause also liver disease. And so it was hard to find anything that would definitively say that CBD was the root cause of it. And even then it's only seen when it's in very, very high dosages. If you guys want to know more about this, projectcbd.com, which is a fantastic website to tell you more about cannabis and CBD, and I would suggest checking them out. And down in the description below, I did link the article where they basically take a very deep dive in regards to the liver stress that is caused by CBD. In regards to cytochrome P450, what you know about that, what you should know about that is that it is part of a superfamily of proteins and found in many tissues, but it's mainly concentrated within the liver. And it's responsible for breaking for breaking down at least 60% of the drugs that are out there on the market that you can take. What we do know about the cytochrome P450 enzyme is that CBD interferes with it, but Again, it's mainly seen at relatively high dosages and not so much seen at the lower dosages that the majority of people end up taking. And a lot of these studies were conducted at such high dosages because of the high dosage of Epidiolex, that seizure drug that's required. That drug is dosed all the way up to 20 milligrams per kilogram. So if you do the math of an average, say, 70 kilogram person, I mean, you're talking about a lot of CBD for an individual to take versus going out and say you buy a 500 milligram bottle of CBD or even a thousand milligram and it's in a 30 ml bottle. Well, you have to divide that amount by 30 ml. So the 500 milligram bottle, if you do the math, that breaks down to about 16.7 milligrams per whole dropper of the oil that you would put under your tongue sublingually. And the 1,000 milligram, if you do the math, is about 33.3 milligrams. So it's a far cry from the very high dosages that are seen in the case of where you start seeing the stress on the liver as well as interference with the cytochrome P450 where it seems to be clinically relevant. And I would say that even in my own practice and in my patients, I haven't really seen anything clinically to be able to attribute to uh, CBD being the main cause of it. And one thing you should know is that a lot of this buzz about the liver disease and everything else mainly came from a Forbes article that was ran online and it was when CBD was trending quite heavily and essentially what they did was they pulled this study and kind of wrote around it and it's, it's a very misleading article. It uh, basically leaves out a lot of the facts. And in that study, they, and I have linked it down below for those of you that are interested to go and look at it for yourself, but they did the study within mice. And in those mice, they dosed them, I think it was around 615 milligrams per kilogram. And they found that they developed stress on the liver. And I think even some of the mice died. They justified giving the mice such high dosages in that study off of something called allosteric conversions, meaning that they're trying to account for mice and humans and the rate of their metabolism and all these other things. But if you look up the whole allosteric excuse, it's, uh, it's, it's very flawed and not very accurate from everything that I could find on it. And I mean, 615 milligrams per kilogram. So uh, that's, that's extremely high, a far cry from the, you know, 16.7 to 33 milligrams that most people seem to end up taking on a daily basis. You know, I equate that to say, you know, if you took, I don't know, or if you ate too many Twinkies, like if you ate a thousand Twinkies, <laughs> I mean, chances are you're probably gonna have some health issues as well. Um, maybe a bit of a stretch and not the best analogy, but you get my point. So 
But nonetheless, at the end of the day, if there are concerns about this, and if you are on drugs such as blood thinners, diabetes medications, high blood pressure, and seizure medications, or anything that you're concerned about, it's always wisest to speak it over with your healthcare provider. And that concludes this video on safety of CBD. If you liked what you saw here and found it educational, it really helped the channel out. If you could take the time and like and subscribe to it because the subsequent video that I mentioned at the very beginning, it will be coming out very shortly and we'll be focusing on what to look for in a high quality CBD product as well as what product I suggest. So stay tuned. Till then, stay safe. Take care.